Hello everyone. Today we are going to show how we can build our very own smart photo de detector that is without any code. We will get into the details about why this could be useful for in your application and the tools and technology that you can look to get started. Thank you for liking and subscribing the videos. It really helps out the channel. And please comment for any videos or topics that you may be interested in. And also check out our newsletter. Subscribe to it for new latest cloud trends and technology. And also go to cloudmysite.com. Let us get started. In this video, we are going to see how easy it is to teach AI what is in a video. We are going to be using Google Cloud. We have made a lot of videos on AWS, Azure, Alibaba, Cloudflare. So today we are going to be making on Google Cloud. We'll use Google Cloud tools and there is not going to be any programming. I'll show you in the demo how to go about it. And this can be very helpful in real life because instead of manually surfing and sorting your like multiple videos, you can teach AI to detect real problems and automatically delete it. Why this matters in real life? Because imagine instead of you doing things manually, you can tell AI that to delete whether a photo is a cat or a dog, it can to sort product images for your online store, to detect healthy versus damaged crops in farming, and identify what's trending in social media photos. Also, you can help doctors detect medical issues in images. All this is powered by something called image classification. So what is image classification? Think of it like teaching a child on how to show a few labeled pictures. Example, this is a cat, this is a dog, like how you would be teaching a two-year-old. And eventually the child can tell you what is in the new pictures that they have never seen before. This is the same thing we are going to be telling AI and we're going to be teaching AI to do. We are going to be using Vertex AI. We, if, if you go to Google Cloud, Vertex AI, it is a machine learning platform that will let you train and deploy ML models, machine learning models and AI applications. And it will allow you to customize large language models for use in your AI powered applications. Vertex AI, it can combine data engineering, data science and machine learning engineering workflows that can enable your teams to collaborate using a common tool set and scale your applications using the benefits of Google Cloud. In this diagram, what I'm showing is it, uh, it has these multiple steps on the how we can do a workflow. This is similar thing that we are going to be doing for the image classification as well. Now, first thing is, is going to be the data preparation. That is, we are going to be using a subset of the data for preparing and then the model training where we will be choosing the training model to train a model and tune it for performance. Model evaluation and iteration that will allow you value to train model, make adjustments to your data based on evaluation metrics and iterate on your model. And model serving that will allow you to deploy a model to production and get online productions or query it directly for batch predictions. And monitoring that to allow you to monitor the performance of your deployed model. Let's get into the demo and see how we can build our very own image classification with next to no code. Okay, so we are going to be using Google Cloud and Google Cloud, you can go and subscribe to it. It will require a credit card. You don't need to pay until you start spilling up resources. And there could be a credit as well that you could avail around 250 to $300 credit, depending upon the country you are in. First was we are going to set up our project. Now, I won't go into the details of what exactly is a project in Google Cloud. There's going to be a lot of documentation or tutorials. But uh, first thing is the project is what you will need to check out. And this is where you can come to the organization and click the project. Let me make a new project and I'll just create image classification YouTube and I don't have any organization because for an organization you need an Active Directory setup, but for the most uh, companies as well, a lot of companies they prefer not to have an organization and to get a quota for the number of products you can create. This is something I will be deleting, there's no re uh, worry for me, but it's always a good practice to create a new project instead of cl cluttering your work and it's good for segregation as well. Click create and now let this image classification project be created and now as part of this setup, 
we are also be going to be using cloud shell and the setup for that okay so now we are going to be using cloud shell to set up the project that we created we will just use the google cloud shell instead of doing on our terminal it will be a little more simpler for people who are not acquainted with google cloud but you come here and activate cloud shell so it'll take a few seconds and it should be up and run just authorize and there you go if you and you want you could have this in a new tab as well so this is the command that we'll be using where i have the project uh, id set up and the project id i can come i can take it from here so you need to put this so i'm i have the config gcloud config set project id and the the and then i'm going to be echoing it so let's run it okay so this is the output it, it got so this is how the cloud shell is done now we need to enable the identity and access management compute engine notebooks cloud storage and vertex ai apis for, so let's run the command for that this is the command that i'm running that where i'm enabling all these apis the iam api the compute api the notebook api storage and ai platform it'll take a few minutes for it to be enabled and all this you could do it from the console as well you don't need to do it from the command line it's just that with command line there is going to be less clicks but this can take a few minutes because it's enabling the apis okay so the apis are enabled i can always come to the come here and i can search for api i can click here apis and services and these are the enabled APIs and services. So it's enabled. You see it's enabled over here. I can come to notebooks. You click on this. It's enabled. So you could come here from the portal and do it. Or for simplicity's sake, just you do it from the command line. Now the API is enabled, we have to grant rules to the user account. This is the command we will be using to pay. We are saying to add IAM policy binding to the project. Give the to the member, the user, this could be a service account as well. Okay, so now the policy is added. Now we also need to add one more permission. For that, we can paste the same command and I can change it to be storage dot admin the ai platform dot user it will provide access to use all resources in vertex ai the storage admin this rule it allow to store the documents training data set in cloud storage okay so now we have the granted the permission we are going to create an image classification data set and import images that we're going to be storing in Google Cloud Storage. This is the data set that we are going to be using. This data set is part of a blog that Google has published. I'll share the link, a part of the blog that is there in the, in the, our blog, as well as in the comments that you can check it out. And, but this is the blog. This is a publicly accessible data. And what they have done is they have categorized these images along with something for us to be able to use. Where you could check these images, you could go to the browser and you could like type over here, which is this because this is publicly available and hit enter and you'll be able to see the data where cloud ML data is the is your bucket name and then your whole path that is going to be there. Now to begin the process of creating the data set and training our image classification model, first we are going to be go going to Vertex AI page and create a data set. Let's go to Vertex AI and in here you click create a data set. And let's specify the name of the data set. We'll just give it image classification data set. Let's choose the region. We'll leave it central, that's fine. And you could if you want, you could provide your own key. Uh, but for now, I'll just leave it with Google Managed and click Create. Now, this will create an empty data set. 
But once this is done, we are going to import the data. It will take a few minutes and we can resume once this is created. Okay, so now our data set is ready. And now select the import files from cloud storage option and providing the sample URI of the CSP file with the image location and label data. Okay, so this is the publicly available data set. Hit continue. This will start the image import and the image import process will take a few minutes. And when it completes, we should be taken to the next page that will show all the images identified for our data set, both labeled and unlabeled. So let's give it a few minutes and we'll resume once the images are uploaded. So the import process has completed and this is where we can see these are like labeled and labeled categories and the images could be seen over here as well. Now we've seen the images and go to the data set and you click here and you can check the setup. Now we are going to be training the model. So we go to Vertex AI and if we have the models that we can choose create this is where it is already showing the data set available ensure the auto ml should be selected and you want to use in cloud click continue and leave this train new model and leave the default click continue and in the train options we can select a model option according to our accuracy and latency needs so i'll leave it by default which is the lower accuracy is fine for me. The explainability, this is optional. And where in Vertex AI, the models, they are made explainable through feature attribution, something we don't need for now. And I will just skip it. And now we can provide the budget, which is the 100 node hours, where we can provide how many node hours you want. I'll just give it 10 for now. And if you want, you could do uh, enable early stopping if you're required, but you can click start training. This can take several hours and an email notification will be sent once it is done. So the training has completed and we can say, we can see over here, which is in the training section. You can come to the model development training and it took around one and a half hours for the training of the images to be complete. To view the model's evaluation result, we can come to the model registry, click on the particular registry link, and in here we could select the different options. You could see the labels, like compare, and you could see the, the precision recall curve. You could do a create evaluation you could type in in the label tulip and you can click on the tulip and you could see and this is where you could see the explanation you could see the outlier score and you could see the false positives as well as the true positives and these are you could see the model correctly printed tulips on these images and that is where you see when the child in the background has tulips and in here there are two types of data issues that we may want to pay attention. One is label inconsistency, wherein if these are the labels over here. If a visually similar sample from the training set has different labels from the test sample, it is possible that one of them is incorrect. So it's something to keep in mind, as well as outliers. If a test sample is marked, there's no outlier marked. It's possible that there are no visually similar examples in the training set. In our case, we don't have, but if you train additional data sets, you may see that there could be outliers. Now, with this, I believe you, you have a good understanding how we were able to have the model. You were able to classify the images, that which is a tool that we were able to train our model as well using Vertex AI in Google. It, it was able to train in one and a half hours because it was a pre-trained model already. But if you have to do from first scratch, it'll be pretty expensive. And uh, so which is where you're better off, you're training a pre-trained model. Now we will access the trained model to deploy to an existing endpoint. For which, let us go to the training page in here. Click on this. And now like the model, click on the deploy and test lab and click deploy to 
endpoint. To use create a new endpoint, give an endpoint name of YouTube auto ML image. And again, you could give any name that you want. It's nothing specific. And you can click. And if you want, you could give a dedicated DNS or you can do click new. And you could do a traffic split if you want. Logging if you want. And click done. Okay, number of compute nodes you need to give. I'll just give one in the number of compute nodes and click deploy. It can take several minutes to create the endpoint and deploy the auto ML model for the new endpoint. The model is deployed. It took some time, but you could see the status is active. Now let's test it out. If you want, you could always test it out from here, from the API sample request. You can click on this. You will get the whole code, be it if you want to send it via Postman, REST, SOAP UI, any of your tools you choose. Or if you want Python as well, you can get the sample code from here. But for this part, instead of it's already a lengthy video, I don't want to make it more lengthy by involving Postman. So I'll come to the model registry, click on the model, which is in the deployed status, click on the deploy and test and upload a image. Now this is where you see it is saying it's a daisy and if this is the ranking it's classification it's saying it's a daisy app based on the model training this was the end of the tutorial because we went end to end on how we can train a model how we can classify images what image classification is how we can deploy it endpoint now we also need to clean up our project we need to delete all vertex ai resources for which we need to undeploy the model for which let's go to the training aspect and we need to click delete training pipeline, click on the model, click on deploy and test. You see this endpoint and this is where we need to click undeploy, those three dots. Yes, confirm. The model is undeployed. Now we need to delete the endpoint. This is the endpoint online prediction. You can click here and click the three dots and click delete endpoint. Now we also need to delete the model. For which, let's go to the model, and this is the model, this is where we click delete model. Ensure this is deleted, otherwise it will be having resources used in your setup. Now we also need to delete the data set, for which we had created the data set, which was over here. Click it, this part, get this three dots, click delete data set. And our data set is also deleted we had the cloud shell and cloud sh cloud shell it in incurs no charges and it will automatically delete it so nothing for you to do now we also had i recollect we had uh, created a bucket we can go to bucket let me open in a new tab and there we this is the bucket I want to delete it as well. Delete bucket. Type delete. And yes, it'll take a few minutes, but after that, the data for should be deleted. We should be good and we shouldn't incur any further charges. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, share and comment. And uh, let us know in next video. Also subscribe to the newsletter to be up to date on the latest cloud trends, technology. Thank you and have a good day.